with the upcoming launch of Ethereum 2, the talk of being a validator through staking has become a really hot topic because it offers the most rewards. Now, when I first heard about it, I didn't know what it entailed, so I did some research, and in this video, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of being a validator, what it is, if it's worth it. I'm gonna cover what is a validator and why would we want to be one? What's the difference between validators and miners? How much can a validator earn? What do you need to get started? And what are the risks? If you like this content, don't forget to hit that bell button and like this video. All right, let's get started. Have you ever wondered how blocks are added to the chain? Maybe not, but let's get into it. So for a block to be added to the blockchain, each must contain the answer to a complex mathematical problem created using an irreversible cryptographic hash function. That's a mouthful. These complex mathematical problems are then sliced into smaller problems and distributed through several groups which are called miners. These are what are taking your money when you make a transaction. Now these blocks are then attested or proposed by a program that is run by humans and they're basically small computers called validators. And think of a validator as a voter for a new block. The more votes a block gets, the more likely it is to be added to the chain. Now, as a validator, you're basically putting your Ethereum up to secure the network. And by that, I mean, it's securing it in that you'll have to put your funds at stake so that you can be penalized for behaving dishonestly. This is how they incentivize people correctly. So in other words, to keep you honest, your actions need to have a financial consequence. So you're essentially saying, hey, validate that these transactions are true and accurate, and I'm putting my Ethereum up as collateral against my word, and if I try to cheat the system or to push an invalid transaction through that is not confirmed by other nodes on the Ethereum blockchain, then I will lose my Ethereum. So it's been basically aligning incentives. Imagine this happened in the real world. Imagine in 2008, if the people involved in the financial crisis had been financially penalized for their part in cheating the system instead of being given millions of bonuses. This is why this is opposite to traditional finance. Now, why be a validator and not a miner? Number one, it's cheaper than crypto mining. So when you mine, you have to buy several computer units. They have to run 24 seven. There's storage, there's cooling systems needed all that stuff. It's just a lot of expense upfront. Number two is environmentally friendly. Again, there's less energy consumption, which means less carbon footprint. Number three is you get daily, weekly, and monthly rewards. So every epoch is 6.5 minutes. Income is deposited to the key for every validation that the latest block is valid. And through proposals, your validator creates the block and then when accepted, you receive a high reward. And number four is initial yields will be like 15 to 20% when staked ETH is less than 1 million and will gradually decrease to 7% as the stake rate approaches 5 million. So you're getting income and rewards and you're not actually having to do anything. You don't have to sit and approve blocks. The software will do it for you. Now, how much can one earn being a validator? Well, it's important to note above all that the amount of money you can earn by validating will depend on the amount of money that you're putting in. So it's basically an, like an interest rate. So if you put more Ethereum in and stake it, you're gonna make more rewards. Now, because validators usually have to lock up their staked funds, it is tempting to stake as little as possible, but this will in turn affect how much you earn as your staking rewards are calculated as a percentage of your staked funds. Just consider it passive income. The greater your investment, the greater the returns. However, you're your money is going to be locked in there. Now, how much do you need to start? Well, to become a validator, you need 32 Ethereum for staking, which doesn't include gas. So, you know, that's pretty high. You know, whatever the price of Ethereum is right now, I multiply that by 32, that is the investment. You'll also have to buy a validator node. So that's 1,100 to 4,000. You'll have to buy a backup power supply for 100 to 200. And there's also electric consumption, which depends on where you are in the world and how much it costs per hour to run your node. And then there's internet connection, which again, depends on what your plan is, but you wanna make sure that it's unlimited with low latency so you don't get uh, in trouble if it goes down. Now, what are the risks? Well, first of all, you won't be able to withdraw your staked ETH or your rewards until transfers are enabled on an unknown date that is likely, could be up to a year from now. And this is done for two reasons, which firstly, ETH2 needs stability as they transition. So they kind of have people just coming and going and taking their ETH um, because they're trying to get this massive blockchain migrated over. So when it first happens, it's going to take a while before you're able to remove your Ethereum. And Ethereum is the first major blue chip crypto to move from proof of work to proof of stake. So it is a big deal. Secondly, having a lockup period without a definite end, 
attracts long-term investors and prevents malicious actors from entering. So this allows Ethereum to get the staked value higher and then migrate over without the fear of a malicious 51% attack on their proof of stake blockchain. You will be penalized or slashed if you act maliciously and you will lose staked ETH in proportion to the damage to the network. So again, incentives are aligned. You can also lose a small amount of ETH if your node goes offline. So if there's a power outage and you don't have backup, you could be penalized for that. There's also software bugs, which could lead to lost funds, declining income. So around April 2021, the rate of income was 8% and it's been going down ever since. And that's because more validators are joining, which lowers the staking rewards for everyone else. And that's just diluting the rewards. Now, how to not get slashed? As a validator, there are several responsibilities that are cast upon your shoulders. And as mentioned before, this is also the reason why they need 32 Ethereum to become a validator. That fund of your 32 ETH, if you do something wrong, that will be deducted from that 32 Ethereum. Now here's some tips to avoid getting slashed. One, avoid downtime. So get a backup power supply. You can buy one on Amazon and make sure your internet connection is stable. Do not try to do any malicious stuff like hacking or bypassing security features. I mean, that should be obvious, but just don't do it. Do not input the same validating keys into two or more servers. That's also a security issue. Make sure if you're migrating to another machine, do not forget to also relocate the slashing protection history, which is a database that contains all your signing history. Uh, do not use a containerized or cloud environment that doesn't have persistent volumes. Uh, this is basically number three, which is protecting your protection history. And number six, worst but very unlikely, is bugs and implementations. Make sure you understand how to set up, configure, upgrade, and troubleshoot any installed software. So you need some technical know-how to be able to do this. But if you are convinced that being a validator is a great thing, you can just go to the Ethereum Foundation and see exactly in a complete guide how to become one of their validators. All right, now if you're interested in staking your Ethereum, but you don't have the technical know-how or desire to set up a validator or a node, or you don't have the 32 ETH, there is other options. And I'm gonna link you below on how you can make money on your Ethereum without having to set up a validator and go through all this hassle. All right, I hope you like this. If you do end up setting up a validator, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, consider staking using a liquid staking protocol, which I mentioned in the video below. Hope you like this and I'll see you on the next video.